Hi, I'm Tim and you're watching Mr Tim Tech on YouTube. If you uh, have been following along recently, you know that I'm currently in the process of doing a Grand Stream network setup series where I'm replacing this equipment, what was previously Unify. So what I'm doing is installing the Grand Stream network devices and currently I have a router, I have a switch and also my old CAT6 patch panel below this. Now it's uh, permanently wired into the back so the cables are permanently uh, done with a punch down tool on the back where it has um, punch down connectors. This means that I cannot currently uh, move the ports about to line up with the switch ports so that they're directly underneath. So what I mentioned in this series is that I'll probably replace the patch panel later on. But I've since decided that I'm going to replace the patch panel now whilst I'm in the process of reorganising the cabinet. It makes sense obviously to replace the patch panel now. So yesterday I ordered a new patch panel and some connectors to go in the panel and these arrived this morning and I purchased the patch panel and connectors from a company called cablemonkey.co.uk if anyone's interested. They supply various cables, all the types of networking equipment, connectors and so on but take a look at the website if you're based in the UK. I think they also deliver to um, Europe as well so just check on the website for uh, delivery charges for that. But anyway, I purchased a Connectix cable system and this is the patch panel. It is a Keystone Jack style patch panel. Let's just open this and I'll show you. So here you go. You'll see that it's empty. It's got uh, no connectors in the port, so it's a plain one. Um, it's got a recess at the back for the cables to be cable tied onto if necessary. So what you do is just put in the keystone jacks into the various ports or holes on the actual panel so that they line up with the switch above depending on where what side or whereabouts your switch ports are lined up on your switch. So that's basically the patch panel. So I'll be putting the new patch panel in I probably won't be able to video it, me doing it, because it's a bit awkward to keep moving the camera around while I'm doing connectors and so on. Um, but I will show you the connectors and me wiring up one connector. I've done one already. They are a bit fiddly to do, so they are time consuming. Next time I might look into some different types of connectors. Same sort of keystone types, of course, where they can be moved around in the patch panel. So let's put that patch panel to one side. Oh, in the box it does actually come with the cage nuts and the connectors for the nuts as well, which go in the cage, and also the plastic black washers. You can probably hopefully see those in the bag there. Now the connectors I'm using are, as I said, Keystone Star ones, and these are also Connectix cable systems. So it's the same brand, Connectix cable system. And these are keystone ones where you just put the cables into the actual recesses on the thing, close the connector and it automatically punches them down. So you don't actually need a punch down tool for this. All you need is a pair of snips to cut the excess cable off. So each colour coded strand will go through and then we pass through each little clip where the colour codes are. Then what you do is trim off the excess from the tops where you threaded the cables through, line these up with the colour coded things on the actual connector so they line up with both colours, push it tightly in, close the covers and then you would wrap a cable tie around the cable at the end that you're threading through to hold it in place. And what I've also purchased is some Keystone blanks, so they will go in the actual patch panel. 
from the back through to the front like so. So you've actually got a blank in place. And of course these can be released and move about by releasing the actual the clip what you press down and release so they can be put through on any of the holes on the actual patch panel. So what I'll do is get the patch panel done. Um, I'll just try and show you wiring up a actual. So here we are and what I've done is uh, strip the cables as you can see, straightened out the strands so they're not wrinkled. And what you would do is thread all these cables through the actual cap so that you have the cable threaded through and it does actually fit quite tightly over. This is Cat6 cable by the way and I'm wiring these to the standard of T568B and the colour coding on the actual keystone jacks is actually made for T568B. So what you do with the cap on the cable, line these strands, colour coded strands up. Um, from left to right we start with brown. So this is actually going in to the actual recess there. Hopefully you can see this. And it just presses down into the actual recess on the cable cap. So you do this for each different colour code, hopefully you'll see. And then once you've done that, the connector pushes on down onto the actual keystone jack. Then you close the two covers together and then put a cable tie around there with the cable inserted. So I'll just carry on and do this and then I'll show you it being inserted and pushed down onto the actual keystone jack. So I'll just do that shortly. So you open up the jack, line up with the colours, make sure the colours line up, push the plastic thing in, firmly into place and then close the actual covers like that. And there is a keystone connector ready to be placed in to the panel from the back. They are very fiddly to do, I must say. Um, I'd probably in future use the punch down ones which require a punch down tool. I think they'd be a lot quicker to do. These are quite fiddly and time consuming. So I think I'd prefer the actual um, punch down jack with the uh, vertical punch down. So to finish this off, what you do is put a cable tie around the end. So here we go with the cable tie. Place that around where the cable goes through and where the jack shuts and then just pull it tight. Cable tightly in place, or it should do. Yeah, it's actually tightly in place. So then cut off the excess on the cable tie. And there we have a keystone jack. So that's one cable done. This will go into the back of the patch panel and this end will go into one of the network devices behind me, either the NAS or the switch or whichever I need to use it for. I have actually made some cables up and I've labelled them with a Dymo label printer. So I've actually tied each one around the cable so I know what cable goes to what and I'll also be labelling the keystone patch panel as well with the port numbers or what the port relates to, which device it goes to. So I know that the cables line up properly with the port names as well on the front. So I'm going to finish doing that and then uh, I'll show you the end result with the patch panel in the cabinet labelled up and um, everything. OK, I'll be back. So here we are. Unfortunately, five hours later, it took absolutely ages to wire up these Kinetix Keystone compatible jacks. I've done 15 of them, so there's 15 jacks here along this new patch panel. Um, they're very fiddly to do. They do work, and once you've 
got them made up. They do actually work properly. Um, I haven't had any cross wires or anything or wires not connecting in the actual modules. Um, so they do actually work. However, as I said, they are very fiddly to do and time consuming. And I would probably go with the vertical punch down ones next time and use a vertical punch down tool as well, which I think I do have. So it probably makes sense to do that. But anyway, I've got them all connected. And as you can see, the patch panel is a lot neater now. It has the cables all connected, labeled up on the actual patch panel, which you can hopefully see behind the cables there. So we've got four ports for the bedroom, four for the lounge and various devices such as NASes and wireless access points and so on. Then above this, we have the Grandstream GWN 7813 router, which I installed, as you have probably noticed in a previous video. Then I have the router, which I've moved to the right hand side so that the ports line up with the actual switch. So we have the uplink there and in there we have the ISP. So the ISP is connected to this port here, which runs into the router. And then I have a SFP module, SFP plus module, I should say, which is running my PC at 2.5 gigabits because it has a 2.5 gigabit NIC in there or network card as it's so called in my PC. So it's connected into one of the 10 gig SFP ports. So that's connected at 2.5 gigabits per second. So finally, I've got it done. It looks a lot neater. I still have one or two finishing touches to do. And also in another video, uh, it might not be the next video, but it probably be in a week or two's time when I get that one uploaded. So that will be going into the rack just below the patch panel here. So there'll be another device going in there and that will also be connecting into my switch as well. And I've already um, wired up a port for that as well. Just this one here, which goes into the patch panel and then the cable runs out from the patch panel and it will go into the back of the device that I'll be putting in there. But I'm not letting you know what it is at the moment. You just have to wait and see and watch that video when it comes up. So I think that's about it for wiring up the new patch panel. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it and keep a look out. More videos in the Grand Stream series are coming soon and also some more other videos as well related to IT and computer networking and so on as I usually do. So keep a look out for those videos. Take care. Uh, bye for now.